welcome to a world of might and magic, where the only limit is your imagination. Come along with us and find out what happens when you just roll. Alright then, let's get right into recap. Who wants it? <laughs> I have inspiration yet. <laughs> what? Um, not I don't here. know, I still can. I'll give it a shot. Um, Looking back at my notes. This is the wrong campaign for something else. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, briefly, what I remembered, uh, we were able to fight some monkey, uh, undead monkeys, and then when we thought we were done, oh no, guess what? There was another horde coming from the whole, uh, the main place where we entered from, and we had a surprise drop from up above, and quickly annihilated them, but wait, there was another extra surprise with a giant undead monkey ape thing. Because it had to try, it was inspired by Paige's giant monkey form, I suppose. And after we dealt with that, the dragon that we forgot that was still there but enjoyed the show, decided to drop down and said, ah, you have passed, now you need to find this Staff of the Heavens, and that's where we left up. And Spoon's probably got an infection from searching in the middle of this <laughs> rotten body. He anyway, went dumpster diving <laughs> in a zombie. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much an accurate recollection of events. I, I like how my notes uh, always have nonsense words, like, we fought monkeys, then more monkeys. <laughs> If I'm reading this five years from now, I will have no idea what I was talking about. Uh, no, but it yep, is going to bring back fond memories. Yep, when I found my right notes, I found an end boss monkey diving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, we have been tasked with finding the staff within this chamber. Um... Can I inspect the dragon saving its hiding in one of his bone boned body? <laughs> you could certainly try. That's where I think he hit it. It's in plain sight, but no, I had it all along. What am I rolling? <laughs> uh investigation. That's about right. Okay. <laughs> you specifically asked to investigate. <laughs> Uh, there are some broken shards of metal of various uh, former implements they could have been made of, but nothing resembling a staff. Well, other than sheer bone, that is. I don't know, that female looks suspicious. I want to inspect the altar. If anything has changed, I should probably get close to it. Let's make the path. <laughs> Watch a halfling sprint. <laughs> it does the movement line for Quill, too. That's great. Uh, of course I do. <laughs> so I assume you're uh, investigating the throne that the uh, corpse was upon? Uh, yes, but also the, the, the pillar if it has any cracks in it. Make that two separate checks. Roll me a uh, investigation for the throne and a perception for the pillar. Perception for the pillar. All right, you don't find anything too out of the ordinary on the uh, throne, although it does seem like it hasn't had the wear and tear that the dragon claims that this place should have been through. Just like the corpse that was upon it, it doesn't seem to have aged a day since it was placed here. As for the pillar, it seems to be in perfect condition. Not a crack or divot in its surface. But there are missing bones, because if I remember, the Draculite originated from here. Yep. 
The bones that were once surrounding this are missing, having reconstituted themselves into a dragon. Could the staff have been, like, reworked into the throne with maybe, like, a true polymorph? I think it would have to be alive for true polymorph to work, but I am not 100% on that. I imagine it can turn object to object, creature to object, and several stuff. Um, entirely possible. The moment to check. The thing is, I have no dispel magic. I detect magic. I can at least narrow it down. True. Okay. So, uh, the first line of true polymorph is you choose one creature or non magical object you can see within range. You already know the staff to be okay. magical. Yes, yeah, okay, so it's not the throne, that's less worse. Oh, uh, are the skeleton hands like uh, above the arm guard? The what? The skeleton hands are above the arm guard of the chair? Of the throne? Uh, yeah, it's sitting in a uh, neutral resting position. I'm going to take them out to see if there's like any buttons or switches inside. <laughs> uh. That seems to be just sheer material. Underneath it? <laughs> there are no secret switches that you can identify. Maybe it's inside one of these crystals. <laughs> Paige is just like, run at every option until something sticks. <laughs> Swoot's up to over there. Uh, well, I would kind of, before I get there, I would be kind of like looking at the walls, see if there's any nooks and crannies or any symbols that I can like perceive to see if there was like, oh, there was this like push button here and reveal a staff, or we have to go this way now. <laughs> Just like any hidden things. Uh, walking around the outskirts of the cavern. You find it to have been a uh, naturally formed cavern, not something made by magical means. Uh, as to what eroded this pocket of livable space, you're not entirely certain, but you can't detect any traces of magic inherently on the walls. Pearl's just kind of sitting on the ledge over here, dangling her feet off, and I just smack the fuck out of my mic arm. Hey, listen, you better not fall. <laughs> I won't. Famous last words. <laughs> her intelligence score is zero. <laughs> 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 uh, just remind me, the pillar goes up to the ceiling, right? Yeah, it goes from floor to ceiling. Let me see if I have any spells for what I'm thinking. It appears to be made of blackened metal. Oh, it's important to read the between lines of the spells. <laughs> like, how do I abuse my magic to figure this out easy? <laughs> See, imagine if one of us was smart enough to have taken detect magic. <laughs> I wanted a wand like that, but I didn't have it. I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that spell. <laughs> None of us do. I'm pretty sure it's within most of our uh, spell lists too. <laughs> Except for Roots, who has no casting levels, but... 
No, I can do a few funky spells, but that involves chi magic or whatever how that works, you know? <laughs> but I'm curious. I'm checking the dragon's perch. I'm gonna see where he's been hanging out and watching the fight. Just gonna inspect up there. No, it's no difficult matter for you to climb up there. It just appears to be a, uh... It appears to be a, uh, rather flat ledge. Not really too much to it. it. Seems to be made of similar materials to the rest of the cave. Oh, I know what that noise was. I forgot to feed my cat. Whoa. Sitting outside the door, climbing. I really don't want to ask for a tip. I, I felt ashamed that session with the chess. <laughs> we can make this work, man. We can make this work. Yeah. Let me see if I can dry the, the fucking pillar. Alright, I'm back. What a mess. Uh, now we're discussing the pillar. Descriptive. <laughs> I feel there's something here. Okay. What are you trying? Oh, uh, can I move the, the chair? The throne in this case? Remind me what your strength score is again? Uh, <laughs> six? <laughs> no, I, I don't think no matter what you rolled, you were getting that to move. <laughs> Can I come spoon to do that? Uh, certainly try, but uh, <laughs> he's still uh, waist deep and zombie at the moment. <laughs> uh, surprisingly, it's not the weirdest thing he's done this campaign. God, he's lucky he's what? immune to disease. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be rolling numbers dice. <laughs> Are parasites considered disease? See, now you're gonna make me go look at a medical journal. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a thing I'd have thought I'd have to do for anything describing anything but that eye surgery. Oh yeah, Mimir's eye, I forgot about this. Let's I typed in our parasites, and it was the second thing that came up and suggested. Uh, they're responsible for many diseases, but are not intrinsically diseases themselves. So says the Encyclopedia Britannica. So that means that Spoon is not immune to parasites. <laughs> but he would be immune to the diseases they cause, so he'd get them, but never knew he had them. <laughs> I feel sorry for his intestines. <laughs> Spoon dies, a 40 meter tapeworm crawls out of his body. <laughs> Creaming squirrels! <laughs> Alright, but, uh, alright, so what exactly are you doing? I'm going, uh, actually, no, I was reading the description of the eye, it's not going to help. Yeah, you have a power that would immediately help. At least that you're aware of. Okay, I can push the throne out of the way, I can't find anything on the pillar. I know we uh, Spoon took his head off, right? 
So it's just the body resting now? Yeah. Well, the head's still there, it's just not attached. Uh, what happens if I try to cast... Uh, I don't have it prepared, shit. Can I use Deliverance Souls and Flash to do that? Let me see. Okay, I, I can spend one minute to trade this spell. Okay. Uh, I'm going to spend a minute changing animate dead to speak with the dead. Interesting. Can't wait to see how this is going to work. <laughs> or <Farly. laughs> Remains to be seen. All right. <laughs> Well, he's going to be doing his ritual for a minute. What's Woot's up to? From my new vanishing point from the perch, do I see anything that might lead me to a clue? <sighs> Nothing innately. Like everything in this room just besides uh, the pillar and the throne and its occupants and obviously all the corpses seems naturally formed. Well, we did have monkeys drop from the ceiling, so I'm going to look up there and see if... <laughs> okay, I think it's something to do with the pillar, so I'm going to look specifically towards the ceiling and the pillar area. Alright, give me another perception check. Perception. <laughs> it seems the last... I don't know nine feet or so of the pillar is slightly thicker at the top. Mm. Does not share that quality with the bottom, though. Okay, so it's just like a weird shape and it drops down to a normal pillar. I'm going to click my heels and kind of fly over there and just kind of inspect it more. Alright, inspect it how? I'm basically like spidering like over this thing even though I'm flying. <laughs> just trying to... Okay, I'm curious if like the pillar is the staff just enlarged. But I don't think I have the magical knowledge to know that. But that's like what I'm theorizing at the moment. Interesting. Well, yeah, you're just moving your way around it, trying to uh, ascertain quality and design. Mm -hmm. And as you're doing so, some of the uh, blackening soot brushes off of it onto your hands and garments. Is it just more soot, soot underneath it, or is it just stone? Uh, it's very thick soot. <laughs> it would take some actual effort to uh, brush it anything underneath. Okay, I'm going to grab my dagger and just start scraping at it, because I'm bored and i got nothing else to do. Alright, so that's going to take you at least a minute, so we can move back to Paige, who's trying his uh, necromancy over there. Uh, Krell, can you bring me that head? <laughs> Which one? There's at least 15. The one is the spoon's bag with the crown. Did he even take that? <laughs> he did. <laughs> did he actually? I need to know. As if far he as I know, he said he put the, the head with the crown in his bag. I want to see if he actually put it. Oh, he didn't actually write it. Unless it's in his treasures thing. It is not. Oh well.
Eventually, Spoon walks over. And uh, not feeling his best, he still does a mighty jump over. I was just going to, you know, use Mayhem to catch, but yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, the jump is nothing for him, so... Way less effort than you actually having to cast a spell. I'm going to put the head on like <laughs> its previous lap to get uh, be easier to to see. And now let's decide what questions before <laughs> take the spell. Should have been doing that while Woods was flying around. True. You had so much time. Actually, I was thinking, I just didn't decide it. <laughs> so, you guys got any ideas? For my first question, is going to ask Do you know where the staff is? Yeah, I mean. Can you add like a side thing? Like, can you reveal the location of the staff? And that kind of like targets, like, oh, he knows where it is. And we don't have to ask the second question of where can he yeah. point it out. Can you point where the staff is? Actually, can you say where the staff is? Because point is going to say he doesn't have a hand. You get five <laughs> questions for Speak With Dead, by the way. Yeah, that's the first one. Uh, yeah. Maybe the second one is who are you? Oh, you said three a minute ago. That was correct. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Because we know pretty much that he must be the Monkey King, but what if he's not? It could just be some random dude. He could be, so let's ask, who are you? Ooh, that's interesting. I never like when you say this. <laughs> no, just something about the wording of the spell. Maybe you can ask if he knows of a man known as an unstoppable force. in mind he would only have knowledge about what has happened while he was living. Do we know we don't know how long he died, right? I had no idea. The dragon's only been here for like twenty years. And we know from Loki that most of the gods died out a long time ago. True. Okay, maybe since he's old and was a monk, really, a really powerful monk, maybe he knows a powerful goddess that held a, a sword that could, could win itself. Entirely possible, but remains to be seen. Okay, uh, we have three questions. Do you have an idea, Woods, for the other two? Oh, we're supposed to, I thought it was like three questions, though. Nope, it's five. Um, five. <laughs> five, okay. Um, I, I looked it up for the exact wording and found out that you get two more questions than previously thought. I think you only last asked three questions the last time you used it. If I did, that's <laughs> unfortunate. I think I did ask five. I don't remember, to be honest with you, and I don't feel like looking back at that. So, 
actually ask, um... No, because the driver was, was here, as you said, by looking at you. I don't know, man. Oh no, we have this tree. Can we ask the fir the three first and see if the um, ask the two later and see if we can have a follow up thing? Yeah, sure. That's ten minutes for the spell. Yeah, you only get ten minutes to ask your questions and receive answers. So, do you want me to use it now? Yeah, go ahead and just ask those three, because I don't think we have any two additional ones. Okay, then I'm going to cast Speak of the Dead at third level. Alright, you begin weaving your magic, and the corpse slowly begins to reanimate, the life uh, returning to its flesh, the light in its eyes beginning to glow again. And why, pray tell, have you brought me down from the heavens? Well, that's new. I thought the corpses were not supposed to gain back a personality. Well, <laughs> apparently you could cast Speak with Dead on a dead body whose soul is still alive. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> it's written into the wording. <laughs> <laughs> genius <laughs> like it literally says uh the spell doesn't return the creature's soul to its body only it's animating spirit <laughs> uh, uh, can you say where the staff is that doesn't sound like a question to me oh boy <laughs> Congratulations, you've annoyed the smart-ass god. <laughs> Who are you? Of course, I am Monkey King. Do you not know me? No, I don't. I am the sage equal to heaven. How do you not know my name? <laughs> Can you say where the staff of the Monkey King is? Well, shouldn't that be obvious? No. Well, I can tell you it's not in the heavens with me. <laughs> I wish I could kill someone twice. Haha, <laughs> you couldn't kill me once. <laughs> My page takes a deep breath. <laughs> Try not to throw this skull back into the lava. You think that'd work? Probably not. <laughs> uh, this isn't a concentration spell either. <laughs> you gotta deal with this till 10 minutes and your questions are out. Since you are in heaven, do you know if a goddess who wields a sword that could cut wind itself? A sword? No, but a fan! Okay, could work. Do you know her name? I don't think Guanin's gonna give that up again. <laughs> okay, Guanin. It's... Uh, it's like that, or did they just butchered it? <laughs> uh, give me a second, I have to look up the actual spelling, because I didn't have that written down. Thank God I know most, most uh, religions... <laughs> mythologies. <laughs> uh... Okay, I did spell it right. Well, you almost spelled it right. You're missing a letter. Okay. Two letters, actually. Three? No, just the yeah. No. You just flipped it. And the Y. 
Yeah. What? Wait. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to make a note of that. Woods, do I have a question for you so we can send this damned spirit back? Uh, I'm going to be facing strip property here. Um, did you ask him about the staff? <laughs> yeah. Dumba said it's not there in heaven. Well, is it here? <laughs> Didn't you hear me the first time? <laughs> I think what's just like floats right back down so you can actually see the skull. It's not so much a skull as a decomposed head. Oh. <laughs> okay, I have a question then. How you would hide it, would it be in a trickery way or more as a disguising kind of way? Huh. Well, I do know every magic out there, but the magic hiding it isn't my own. That's five questions, by the way, and the head returns to its original state. Oh, thank God. <laughs> uh, Paige immediately shoves the bag back to Spoon, never showed this to me again. <laughs> How long I've been practicing my monkey. <laughs> okay, we got pretty much nothing. At least we knew that this was the monkey king. It was, but not still is. Let's assume, how would a leech hide a staff? Woods, if you needed to hide a staff, how would you? Um, let's see. Is it from the law or just in general? Uh, in general, like a secret, powerful staff. <laughs> okay, stay with me here. Maybe, I think what's like crouches low to the rocks. It has to be hidden under something in a compartment. I start flipping over rocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was too good. <laughs> uh, uh, nothing but lava snails down there, though. Oh, well, that's not helpful. No, 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 no. We just gotta look for a switch or like a little button or just a rock. It could be underneath, you know, you can never know. That's how they hide it in plain sight. The dragon told us. Plain sight. This was so smart like two minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> this went from zero to spoon in front of the conspiracy board real fucking quick. So it's gone at this point. Uh, can I summon an unseen servant? I don't see why you couldn't. 
it's yeah going to cast this as a ritual, so no spells that are used. It's over ten minutes of your time. Good thinking. You have more people with hands. Start flipping rocks. Does Krill have anything even remotely useful? Why did I have to pick so many illusion spells? Oh yeah, because I'm going really hard into the illusion thing. God, Krell only has two innately damaging spells. Not three. Outside of her cantrips. Why every time I play D&D &D, my mental capabilities go to zero? Yeah. Same. That's, this is why I think I can't play a smart character. I just, because I'm not smart in general. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, looking towards the Dragon Lynch. Was it your creator that hit it? Or hit the staff? Or was it here already? It was hidden before we arrived. Okay. Oh, so we have no idea who hid it. Okay. You spent a long, like around here a long time. Do you ever have, have any like suspected areas? You're like, huh, that could have been where it was, but you're not quite sure, but it's not your job to find out. As you saw when you entered, I laid dormant for no one is around. Oh god, should that be a disappointing life? Good thing I'm not alive then. <laughs> That's some emotional so damage right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like when you're checked out, are you or when you're not dominant, are you completely checked out or are you just kind of in like I don't know, like a mental state where you're not aware of your surroundings. It's difficult to describe. I know what's going on around me, but it's as if I'm in another place, another time. Like a trance? I suppose you could call it that. It's close by, at least. In these chambers, yes. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna have Krell make an intelligence check. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> guess it's a good thing she gets plus two on fucking everything, because it's Jack. But, uh... Hmm. Probably just kind of stroking her chin, thinking, trying to puzzle out. A <laughs> thinking goblin. Sit here, you little shit. Just because she has an intelligence score of zero, <laughs> does not mean she isn't smart. Ugh. Being smart has nothing to do with being smart, okay? I just remember what, you, uh, what your uh, positioning to Krell is and what your, your uh, constitution score is. <laughs> I shall be quiet. Because <laughs> she's got a whole... Ten tries for you to fail that save. <laughs> I have another question. If it's now 
finally processing this. You said the staff was here before you were created, right? That is correct. Okay. Do you know why your creator wanted you to protect it or kind of at least be a guardian of it? He said he owed a favor to a goddess or a god. That is correct. I believe the previous guardian was slain. Although, as evident, the staff was never located by that particular individual. I thought that was weird. I wasn't sure if I was paying attention or too busy looking at rocks. I assume after we are done here, we're going to be free? You're free to come and go as you please. No, no. Uh, the, the, the dragon will be free. Should you take possession of the staff? I suppose so. What does a Draculich do for a living? That's a good question, actually. I'd never put much thought to what I would do if I ever got out of here. <laughs> am, I to, am I putting Man. an existential <laughs> crisis on a dragon? <laughs> I was about to say the very same. <laughs> He's just staring if, off to the middle distance, thinking about his existence. <laughs> if I may, I think if you practice playing your ribs like a xylophone, you could probably do something cool. Well, ignoring what just happened, <laughs> my plans after becoming a leech is to build a nice tower with a room full of servants to serve me. And then I'm going to collect every single book in the kingdom. And what exactly is stopping you from doing that in life? Because... <laughs> Hobbits don't because live you're... long. Because the halflings don't live as long as I need to. I don't know. I know one that you that lived to be 111 years old. <laughs> yeah, but I need like... Forever. <laughs> I said that completely out of character. <laughs> True. And no, I did not recently rewatch The Hobbit. Shut up. I like the Robbie Hobbit movies. <laughs> People always speak bad of them. I always like, but I like them. They're really good. The original I was mean... a bit wonky, but. That was I mean... also like what? 30-something years ago, give or take? No idea. I know the books were really fucking old. I have the book that's not here. I forgot to lend it to a friend. But nothing could top off the Lord of the Rings movies. So that there's a reason why The Hobbit was so hated. The original Hobbit was released in 1977, Lord of the Rings would follow the next year, Return of the King two years after that. Oh, there was a version even farther before that in 1967. Which one did you watch? I watched the 77 version. Well, that's the first one. I watched the newer one. The trilogy. Anyway. Back to a dragon's anyway, uh, existential crisis. <laughs> yeah, but uh, since I like books, I want the servants to go collect it for me. But you know, if I start doing it now, I'll go old and die before everything is done. That's fair, but perhaps you could pass it down as a legacy to children, a community. 
page looks at him like incredibly like are you serious? Should I not be? Uh, <laughs> Which does see, not innately a... equal evil. <laughs> Especially with a... Draco liches who are often forced into that form. True. You see, I have a thing with uh, children is that I can't stand them. Is it because they are taller than you? <laughs> <laughs> Not every child is from fucking squirrel stat and it's six foot at age eight. I remind you that Krell is nine and taller than you. <laughs> Although technically in Godwood kind she is an adult. <laughs> she is an adult. It, it's not a size problem, it's an attitude. <laughs> Didn't you have a staff to find? Oh yeah, that. <laughs> well, I'm guessing the circle. The 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 spell I mean. Yeah, you were casting uh, Unseen Servant while well, Woods was frantically searching rocks. Or I knew it. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm gonna change from the rocks to like the base of the pillar. Alright. You're doing about Just like... that. Once again, to the Draco Legend. They didn't happen, or your crater, or whatever situation. You wouldn't have to overhear a riddle or a clue of where we can like narrow this down. Not that I am aware of, no. Okay. Right, step step. Uh, Woods, you could try and look at the crystals. Oh, that's right. I wanted to collect a few. We'll go to this pink one here, or pink purple one, away from the lava. And just try to inspect it and see if possible if I can, like, kind of chip one off. Take out your dagger and begin to jab at it, trying to get, like, a small piece of the cluster out. And you manage to get a small, uh, a few small, uh, finger-sized crystals. Do you know how much one of these would be worth? Uh, you probably have to take it to an appraiser. But... Who knows? Y you know, page one opens one eye while it's still concentrating. Uh, uh, if we manage to succeed here, we could probably restart the mining operations on our own and gain a slight profit by the side. Yeah, it's almost like we actually know a company of miners. Exactly. And then we would have influence in the city as well. Am I becoming Peril Palpatine? <laughs> we start gathering the political fashions on our side. How long until the spell cast? What? How long until the spell is cast? Oh, I assumed you were working on your 10 minute ritual. So... I, I am. Yeah. I'm lucky. Yeah, so your unseen servant appears before you. Well, he doesn't. He's unseen. You know what I mean? You could feel his presence. <laughs> I'm going to take a small knife that I have in my pocket and send him starting to carve out the pillar to the center, like uh, 
Woods was doing before getting interrupted. Alright, so your unseen servant takes the dagger in hand and starts just slowly chipping away at the thick layer of soot that has uh, accumulated along the base of this pillar. And it is going to be there for a while. Page just sits on the farm. No, if he would help, it would be faster. And <laughs> it's not going to move a finger. <laughs> the entire pillar is covered in soot, but it keeps on being chipped away. It's not in the step's not stuck in the soot pillar, is it? No. That's my idea, actually. That's why I'm sending him to carve the suit out. Mm. Okay. How, what, or how, yeah, what's the radius of this pillar again? Uh, it's about 15 feet in circumference. Okay. And you said it kind of Flurries out like a. I'm just gonna use. Or how do you describe pillars? But it kind of goes out up top. Yeah, it. Uh... God, now I can't think of the word, but I knew it 10 minutes ago. <laughs> My brain wants to say bevels, but I know that's not the right word. Okay. My question is, like, if it's... I'm gonna go on the map real quick. If it's, it. like, kind of going like that... Ish. Sure on, I'm zoomed in. Oh, I'm on the top, uh, right corner. My thing's in gray, so... Okay. So I'm wondering if there's a part where it's kind of narrower in the center. shape. Okay. Alright, so it's just a straight down. It doesn't have a weird, like, K formation yeah. kind of thing. Oh, I'm, I'm not crazy enough to do it, but spoons there. <laughs> spoon, how strong? How strong is spoon? Uh, max strength without magical boosting. Oh, okay. I'm curious if he can punch that pillar, if it can crack or something. <laughs> Because I don't think anyone has shattered, uh, you know... Krell has destroyed. shattered. Oh, well, first I'm convinced what's to punch it, and then I'm going to say, okay, well... Does something have... to shatter? <laughs> I think How do you write suit? What? How do you write the material that the pillar is made of? Soot. S O O T. Okay. So. Uh, bring up spoons. I think he actually has at least one hammer. Actually, I know he has a, ch a hammer. Okay, okay. I searched for the amount of water in suit and I got a little bunch of weird results. How weird. <laughs> yeah, black powdery, flaky substance, my sister. What are you looking up? Okay, uh, suit uh, can absorb water very efficiently. Oh. So. I would assume that the suit is lightly wet here. Uh, not to the touch. 
but like uh, like the inside layers, I can see where the unseen servant is carving. Uh, it seems to be more uh, consistently liquidy as it gets deeper in. But the outermost layers are very thick and hard. <laughs> if I were to press Blight, I wonder if it would crack or at least become easier to chop it off. Who knows? Meanwhile, Spoon is just standing by with a regular size hammer in one hand and a maul in the other. See if there's like a ringing sound in there if it's hollow or if it's just, you know. Which hammer something. do you want him to use? I guess it's the I don't have his list, so I'm gonna guess knowing Spoon, it's gonna be the biggest hammer he has. Well, he's got a regular size hammer in one hand and a maul in the other. <laughs> do the maul. I see him doing that. <laughs> well, he was asking you which one you want him to use. I point to the biggest one there, the mall. <laughs> All right. He tucks his working hammer back into his tools and takes a good grip on the uh, big old mall that he got forever ago and is never actually used in combat. Takes a He's few... in combat now with a stone pillar. Let's try it. And he just takes up all his might and just slams it into the pillar with everything he's got. Sending reverberations down the mall and through his arms into his body, kind of shaking him to the core a little bit. You know the feeling. Mm. And uh, it leaves a sizable dent in the uh, soot, but other than that, not much effort. Mm. For sure, it was gonna shatter. Can anyone else do that? <laughs> Oh, shatter? I can do shatter. Crow move guys are trying to get a good few feet away from that ledge. I probably do the same. <laughs> Alright, I need a target to aim at. Um something that makes sound. Okay. You can hear it if I was yeah. to throw a dart at it to like hear a thump, you'd be able to target. Yeah, probably. Okay, I throw a, a dart somewhere. Uh, before that, I will call the unseen servant back, otherwise, you would shatter into non existence. <laughs> <laughs> Just until you spend another 10 minutes casting it again. Yeah, so I throw a dart somewhere where like we won't be caught up in the radius, but far enough. Where we're gonna be safe. Well, the reverb from it hitting will give her a general idea of the area of the pillar so she can aim a little bit further away, but still be able to get it. Can spend a second level spell slot to cast Shatter. Action. So, uh,. Yeah, every creature in a 10-foot radius, but she managed to get us all the way up from it by targeting dead center of the pillar, giving its general shape she could estimate and get us all out of it. Uh, there is a massive, painfully intense uh, ringing noise that echoes out through this massive cavern. So, uh, that's hurting some ears. Small, small little bit of tinnitus never hurt anyone. Well, it does when you rely on your hearing to move around. But Krell is smart enough to cover her own ears before casting. And, uh... Yeah, from the point of origin where Spoon had hit his hammer earlier and Woots had skillfully planted her throwing dart, uh, you see uh, 
spider webbing out just cracks all throughout the uh, bottommost part of the pillar, just spreading out through the soot. And uh, I think we perception checks people with vision. People with vision. Oh, yeah. Counterbalances that in that one from earlier. I love how it's both 17 and 27, and just like if we had like someone else, maybe then 37 or just like minus 7. Well, Krell's perception is a big old plus 5 because she's proficient in it. So, it is right the middle between you twos. But, uh, the sound doesn't affect Boots as much as it does Paige, so he opens his eyes just a bit quicker. And from within the cracks formed from Krell's shatter in the soot, you see what looks almost like gold. A gold bar or like a gold vein kind of like in stone? Uh, like solid gold that spreads okay. throughout all the cracks. Did I do good? Oh, yeah. Found something shiny. I like shiny. Girl has no concept of shiny. Oh, well. Um... <laughs> uh, now I can solve this. How does he describe shiny to someone who can't see? <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Like we just see cracks and gold in the middle, or we see something golden behind it? Um, I think you just asked the same question twice. I probably did, so yeah. <laughs> we just understand. Like, like uh, I kind of want to know if the cracks that are made are made of gold, or we just see something golden behind the cracks itself. You see something gold behind the cracks. Oh, I see. It's the soot itself that's cracked, and gold beneath the soot. Can we try to take the soot out, now that it's cracked? Probably just pieces? You could probably break it off more efficiently than you were before. Yeah, no, no, no. Go on, sea servant, <laughs> back to work. <laughs> this time is easier. Spoon pulls out his pry bar and uh, offers it up to help out with prying off hunks of soot. Just goes to town, just breaking off chunks in his frantic spoon way. And uh, soon we have a good uh, three foot by three foot section of the soot completely removed from the pillar, filling a uh, solid gold cylinder type shape. How thick is the cylinder? Um, it's about a couple inches thinner than the pillar originally was. Okay, let's try to take it all out. It might be something, some some signal, some wounds inside. I think you're misunderstanding how I'm describing this. Yeah, one more time, I'm gonna hit your gas, so go ahead and help anything. The cylinder is only a couple inches smaller than the pillar was described in, in circumference. Okay, so if it's within the same pillar. Okay, um, do we notice anything marking on this, uh, the gold? Or, like, if you, like, scrap away where you said we had, like, a good surface area of it? Yeah, interestingly any... enough... There are no tool marks or anything, even from all the brute force and Spoon and the Unseen Servant have been doing to remove all the soot. There's not a single scratch on this golden surface.
is like solid or is there a, like marks of some kind paint like, perhaps mm -hmm. anything it is completely solid gold Okay. There's no green, it's just a plain, so smooth surface. I just realized something. You instantly clean or soil. Uh, I mean, uh, clean an object no larger than one cubic foot. Couldn't I just use that to get rid of the suit? You could. <laughs> You're just gonna have to cast it a great many times. <laughs> uh, it's. F I imagine it's faster than the tools itself, so. Let's try to take the majority of the suits where Paige can reach. Uh, well, you can, you can reach up to 10 foot, so. I'm assuming you're going to systematically do from the base of the pillar to 10 feet high. Yep. Yeah. Alright, so you spend the next, uh... I don't know. <laughs> well, if you go by the one action per cast, you cast it ten times per minute. So that's ten cubic feet. So you wouldn't get the full, uh, ten foot high up, but... Uh, you've got the bottom almost three feet completely uncovered from soot, and it is solid gold all the way around. Let's do it until I can no more. Uh, <laughs> so another 30 minutes later, give or take, because I'm not doing the exact math. Holy shit. <laughs> You just keep going around the pillar, spam casting your press the digitation every six seconds, and clear it off bit and bit, and now ten feet high of golden pillar is completely uncovered in soot. Okay. Does it look to be like connected to the wall or, or not the wall but the ceiling and floor or is it just like a giant cylinder? Uh how do you mean? Like, go back to my drawing board here. Like, would it... Okay, no matter what, it's still staying, like, standing up. But, like, if I was to, like, kind of dig around underneath it, like, would I notice it's, like, capping off at some point? Like, here's the bottom of it, but then, like, here's, like, a little bit of dirt that, like, it's standing on. Oh. Because <laughs> oh, it's not... It's not like a straight pull, like, oh, it goes down to the earth, like, another 15 feet before it takes a left, or it goes up another 20 and takes a right. Uh, from what you've uncovered the bottom, uh, it looks very similar to what you investigated at the top. Okay. So it's got that kind of whip. A little ways up. Okay. Knock on it Didn't catch that. I'm gonna knock on it to see if there's an echo. I know you said it's solid, but just like press up against it just to see if I can hear anything. Knock on. All right, so you press your face to the golden surface and give it a few knocks. You can hear the echo of your knocks reverberating through the metal. It doesn't appear to be hollow. You do kind of feel an almost, uh, I don't know the word for it exactly, but, uh, just an odd hum in the reverberations. Is 
Is this a music puzzle? <laughs> I am not that cruel. I told you, I got all my puzzles out of this, my system with the puzzle box room. Just this one song on repeat. I feel like it's played like three times. Probably has, knowing how we're, we're doing, or <laughs> proceeding with this. Uh, Spoon, can you uh, put the throne here? Uh, he can certainly try. He's gonna have to go and check that. That's gonna be heavy. How is he not proficient in athletics? He's proficient in acrobatics. A bit of, uh, I want to say inhuman effort, but he's the only human. <laughs> With an uncommonly human strength, he manages to drag the, uh, chair and its occupant a good ways away from the pillar. Is before anything, is there anything on the behind of the throne? There was not. Oh, uh, now that it's solid gold, does Mimirai change anything? Um... Yeah, your magic eye has no idea what it is. has no idea then that's interesting so far your eye has only identified items and uh all items of import and people true but specifically not gods so not gods celestials or is it fiends or fae it's both Celestial Infernos and Gods, so Fae you can. Oh, yeah, but one, day, of one, of these days, <laughs> one of these days, Fae is going to go to the Fae Wildwood and Kel's Caves up there. <laughs> Take everybody's names. <laughs> you, you know that scene from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean where he's running from the, the cannibals? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, every page, but without the seasickness. Exactly. And probably flying. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so what are you guys up to now? Carl's over here still trying to figure out sh what shiny is. Oh, yeah, what I shiny. haven't explained it to her. Um... <laughs> Okay. She like completely blind. She can't like see any like you know how like some people that are blind can like perceive some sorts of light. She was born blind, so. Or it's just all dark for her. Okay. All dark. Okay. I'm gonna feel guilty if I can't explain this right. <laughs> all right. Um. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm gonna explain this as best. Okay, so sometimes certain metals reflect and appear brighter. 
Oh, that makes sense. And the easiest explanation might be, imagine if an object could hum visually. Well, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Kind of like coins. Oh, I can tell the exactly. difference. <laughs> yeah, no one ever thought about that. Krell has bought things. <laughs> yeah. No one understood. No one even bothered to think, wait, how does she know which money is which? I would guess it be like passes the hands on the coin. Usually it's yeah, sizes and like usually it's sizes and weights. Oh, I thought it was more like a brew thing, because I'm not sure if they're minted or anything. Well that would work also. Or you could just yeah. go the daredevil path of storing your coins separately. Oh yeah. You taste each coin <laughs> before giving. Well, they would have an interestingly different taste, but, uh... I just imagine the face of the chalk keeper. Wait a moment, let's see this is gold. <laughs> <laughs> this small gobbo girl licking coins one by one before handing them to the shopkeeper. That's the campaign with it. actually someone did that. <laughs> <laughs> like I gotta make sure it's real, and because like we were in the shady town, he's like, "How do you? Can, how can you tell?" I'm like, "I think someone suggested how you like in the old days he'd buy a coin to see if it was real or not, you know." Dude. So I think he did that, but he misinterpreted it and he just started looking. Like, "Yep, I think that's silver." <laughs> <laughs> I thought they would bite it to test its uh, if it was the right kind of metal. Oh, I should. Yeah. Been, but I just had that ass backwards. They wouldn't bite it to test. Uh, if it was real, they would bite it because people used to get really cheap tin and coat it in gold and try to pass it off as gold. But if it was a tin coin, it would bend. That's interesting. Your history fact for the day. God, we're hitting all the courses today. We got our mythology, our history. Whatever you want to call the existential crisis he gave a Draco, Draco Lich. Uh, philosophy? There you go. Yeah. Alright, so you got 10 cubic feet of golden cylinder uncovered now. Okay. Never been around like such so much metal at one time. Is it uh, immediately connected to the ground, or is it like a gap or something? Uh, it is connected to the ground. How deep into the ground it is, you're unsure of without actually attempting to dig it out, but... Who knows what that could do to the structural integrity of this cavern. Uh... Seeing from one island to the others, are like they also like the pillar like straight to the ground, or are they have holes in, uh, underneath? How do you mean? Like, uh, l l l let me do the <laughs> drawing course as well. The drawing board. The drawing board. Let's uh, pick it. Are they? It helps get your thoughts like out. This, or are they like this? you asking about so I know how to answer that huh? are the islands completely uh, down the the rocks or do they have holes underneath where you can see what's in the middle um, like so if someone could climb underneath uh, yeah they are pretty flat down you did see a uh, ape or two climb the vertical surface so there this one the left one yeah. Okay, so yeah, there goes my plan of <laughs> seeing what how the pillow looks from underneath. What are you gonna do? Move twenty feet of earth to get a good look at it? Don't ask my mind how it works. Did you bring dynamite? <laughs> Don't answer that question. <laughs> I have magic dynamite. 
No, this raises a good thing. I'm curious if this is a magic sphere or cylinder or just like a normal cylinder made of metal. How can someone heat uh, metal or just like? No, it needs to be hot enough. Well, no, gold's pretty soft. Is it really gold? Um, far as you can tell. Do you have a gold testing kit on you? <laughs> no, but like, couldn't Paige know of some kind of metal that looks like gold? Well, pyrite exists. I feel like he's pyrite. Pyrite's better known as fool's gold. See, we're hitting geology now, or, yeah. Yeah, geology. <laughs> uh, and you thought you were done with glasses. <laughs> Pirate. Can I insight? You said this thing was humming when I'm, like, laying it, like, across it. Yeah. Not cross it, but like next to it. Can I insight that check that hum, or just try to like, I don't know, what's the vibe it's giving off? It's just a hum? Yeah. Like, uh, probably be no louder than the hum your microwave makes. I could quantify that with a real world. Shots, man, this whatever puzzle this is is confusing as hell. gonna hate me when you figure out the solution. At this point, I'm just hugging it. <laughs> it's pretty much getting enough uh, metal to metal contact as you can. It's so metallic, I can't help but appreciate <laughs> it. It's large mass. Uh, somebody clip that. Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, that uh, reverberating hum continues even when you're no longer actually striking the pillar. So it definitely seems like the hum is coming from either uh movements in the ground on either side or from the pillar itself which you cannot tell okay um who the draco is i'm not sure how being a lich works in your state of being Do you have any capabilities, if you could lend us briefly, that may assist with your freedom? I think that would go out of the bounds of my, shall we say, employment here? Well, yeah. I am meant to guide, not assist. I can watch, but never help. Woods, can uh, try to use the crystals you picked before to scratch the gold. Okay, I take out one of the purple one I chipped up and just kind of scrape the gold. I feel like Paige is doing a lot of research on how soft or hard uh, gold is. <laughs> now he's definitely got that wiki page up on the other screen. <laughs> I don't have one monitor. <laughs> you know what I meant, though. But, uh... Yeah. 
And Woods takes out one of the crystals and tries to scratch the surface. And where a crystal like this would normally scratch gold, does not. Ooh. Would it scratch pyrite? <laughs> oh yeah. Pyrite is a lot softer than gold. Uh, does Crow have any lightning spells? Uh, she does not. A couple thunder spells, a fire spell, a lot of illusion spells. Anything that deals electric damage? Nope. Woods, do you have anything? Uh, I'm more into the shadows and punching something than electricity. <sighs> I can't believe I'm seeing this. Do we have any type of fluffy cloth? Define fluffy. Like a blanket? Let me check. <laughs> a definite maybe. <laughs> Loki doesn't even have any. Lightning spells. I wonder why. <laughs> That's his brother and stuff. Nephew, but yeah. Nephew, I don't have. Yeah. I don't have blankets. Cause you know I can't really feel that too much. But I do have a purple cloak with gold trim on it. Could Paige make, <laughs> make uh, electricity with that? A, a static? Um, quite possibly. Okay. Uh, I feel it's interesting that you went to, Wo to Woots for something for static electricity, and not the man who half of his gear is made of squirrel pelts. I did not think of that. <laughs> Does Spoon have something better? <laughs> the squirrel pelts. You know, they have fur attached to them, which is really good for making static electricity. Yeah, let's... Uh, let's take the biggest pelt Spoon has. <laughs> That'd probably be his backpack. Yeah, Spoon's big old... Backpack made of dozens of squirrels stitched together squirrel hides. Inside is just completely lined with fur. Okay, let's make it electricity and try to touch the pillar. Alright, you Rub your hands as much as possible on the fur, trying to build up a good static charge, and slowly and methodically reach out for the pillar, and, uh, get zapped. I, <laughs> I imagine that would happen. <laughs> But well, is there not... a second <laughs> Uh, what now? Is there a second effect? No, the electricity just passes from your body to the gold, which is a conductor. Yep, oh. the gold is a really good conductor of electricity. That's yeah. why I thought of doing that. You said lots of computer parts. For that reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, putting electricity, no use. Sharp tools, nope. Fire? has to be extremely hot. How hot do you think Are a you... fireball spell is? Uh, I view that as more combustible, but... How, how hot a fireball spell is? Google things. Well, Because... that's why we're thinking on that. You have Mage Hand, right? I do. Can you pick up some of the lava and just fling it quickly before it cools down at the pillar? Let's 
Let's see, mage hand. The hand vanishes more than the video view. It doesn't say that the hand takes damage. I think I can do it. And if that fails, I can just cast Fireball. Yeah. The only spell ever any wizard ever needs. <laughs> People have actually quantified this. <laughs> Really? Of course they did, it's the internet. <laughs> I, I would be more surprised if they didn't. You find a lot of worse stuff on the internet. <laughs> oh. I'm also handily on the same page, I now know what temperature cold melts at. It's about a thousand Celsius. Uh, 1064.18 degrees Celsius. Mm. And uh, people estimate that uh, a fireball would be anywhere between 1500 and 2000 degrees Celsius. Well, we could melt gold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first let's try uh, Spoon's idea since he would not consume a uh, uh, spell slot. Now we out here wearing metallurgy. That's trying to pick level the mage hand and throw at the pillar. Mm. The things y'all make me research. <laughs> ah shit, the drop a d4. The most dangerous device to drop on the ground is a D4. Especially if it's metal. Especially if it's metal, I'm making a dice tower right now. It helps me think. Wow. Uh, the general consensus is yes, a mage hand could hold lava. It doesn't say in the spell that it takes damage. <laughs> yeah, and it wouldn't be dissipated if it did take damage. So yeah, you uh, you send your mage hand down to scoop up a good handful of lava <laughs> it floats back up Oops, smack my mic again okay now what exactly are you going to try to do with this handful of lava uh, probably up here i was now looking at that screen you hold on okay what are you doing uh, about here all right. And what exactly are you doing with the lava? Hucking at the pillar. <laughs> All right. So your mage hand just reels back and fastballs a handful of rapidly cooling lava at the pillar of gold. And uh, nothing really happens. There's no markings. In, uh, if we chip away the lava once it cools. No damage to this pillar? No damage whatsoever. Okay. Alright. I think I have another idea for doing this temperature thing. Since we're in an extremely warm place from the way you guys are sweating all the time. Yep, a page is every minute casting prestidigitation to get rid of the sweat. Crow also has prestidigitation. She just doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Which means she's gotta, gotta take a she's gotta take a bath later. 
Maybe we should try something cold. Well, I think Paige does have a spell that does cold damage. I do, and it's prepared. <laughs> well, I hope so. It's a freaking cantrip, if I recall correctly. Uh, no, I don't have a cantrip anymore, but I do have Ice Knife. Oh, yeah, it's not at all the spell I was thinking of. <laughs> Although, uh, it does specify it has to be a creature you throw it at. And one creature within range. Ah, fucking warding. <laughs> wait, 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 could I... <laughs> oh, I know, I can put my Unseen Servant here. There you go. <laughs> He's still around. This. Uh, you do get to make a ranged spell attack. There's actually a stat block out there for an unseen servant. Uh, there he is, actually. I think it's on the spell itself. It... AC 10, one hit point, a strength oh, no, that's, of two, that's... and can attack. Oh, AC up. 10, okay. Uh, and I'm going to tell him to sit still, so could I gain advantage on that? Sure, you said? Yeah. Okay, let's go with it. Ice knife. Oh, it, I have to go on the car for some reason. I don't think your unseen servant has a uh, preservation of life mechanic, but yeah, you throw your ice knife and it hits the unseen servant, killing it instantly, and then your ice knife explodes. <laughs> let's see. Oh, oh shit. The dealing seven damage cold to the pillar of gold. None of us within five feet of it. Ooh, yawn snuck up on me. But uh, the ice doesn't seem to have done any damage to the pillar either. Can I kick the fucking pillar? <laughs> 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 yeah, you can certainly kick the pillar. Congratulations, your foot now hurts. <laughs> but, uh, you do feel that humming that Luz was feeling earlier. Maybe if we try to hit from all sides at once. Why is it that you people always just want to hit things? Because we're not uh, smart. <laughs> in this case, uh, since it, I think the humming has something to do with cracking this th thing open. I imagine the louder it gets the best, the better. The louder it gets. You do realize Krell let out an ear-splitting scream just a few minutes ago that only cracked the soot around it. I meant the humming. I think the humming is a byproduct of churning lava, but... Do you? Oh, it's... from that, okay. <laughs> Forget it. I'm gonna laugh if this is not the staff or something like that. has anything to do with the staff, it's just a cold cylinder. <laughs> oh, I know! Uh, what about the, the crown of the skull? Can we try touching it? Uh, the a, it is a simple golden hoop circuit, uh, unbroken in design, and touching it to the cylinder does nothing. It was worth a shot. Gold, gold, gold. So it's obviously magic gold, because no way in hell would a normal metal stand bad. So... 
Is there any clues near the chair again? I mean... Uh, there any wasn't sl- anything on the chair. Paige had already investigated it thoroughly. Okay. Fancy looking chair for the Monkey King. I want to take a look at this crystal here. <laughs> this is the most interesting thing in the world right now. <laughs> Wait, do, do, the cr- do the crystals resident or make a humming sound or something like that? Uh, very faintly. But not nearly okay. as much as the uh, pillar does. Okay. <laughs> I want to know what that laugh was about. I just had a very stupid idea. Well, knowing our priority, it's probably going to work. So what is it? You see, you said it once that a giant ape would do siege damage. Yes. And this is a really big uh, pillar. Correct. (laughs) What would happen if a giant ape would start punching the shit out of it? Well, there's only one way to find out. Okay, who wants to be a giant monkey? Sounds like it's going to take up a lot of space, so I'm just going to leave the fight in here. And Krell's going to fall in suit because she wants nothing to do with giant monkeys. That a spoon it is, then. The spoon wasn't paying attention at all. He's just like, wait, what? <laughs> and suddenly oh. he's a giant monkey. <laughs> There we go. I can get out the stat block for giant monkey. (laughs) (laughs) The next session is going to be very confused. Why am I a monkey now? (laughs) Oh, he just popped online too. <laughs> yeah, he's got no idea what's going on. He's a giant monkey. I think he's waiting for instructions on why he's a giant monkey. Uh, spoon, start beating the shit out of the, the pillar. That big uh, grin comes across the giant ape's face and he just starts wailing on the pillar, knocking off chunks of soot and, uh, well, great chunks. <laughs> uh, making his way up the side of the pillar, eventually he reaches the uh, spot where it thins out. And, uh,. You notice that after it thins out, that part of the metal is red. Oh, like red is in hot, or red is like, oh, it's discolored. Uh, red is in, that's the actual color. Oh. Boom, can you clean the suit of the... Uh, unintelligible ape noises ensue as this giant ape spoon tries to communicate with you. <laughs> I will think of that as a yes. He just goes back to wailing on the pillar as high up as he can reach and as far up as he can clear it's red all the way up. Assumably until it reaches the your image at the top. Uh, I'm gonna up and kind of inspect that because it wasn't red before, so. Uh, is it a different metal or is it just gold of other or painted or something? 
Actually, we don't know if this is really gold. It might, it might just really look like it. Kind of a doodle, but we can infer this looks like. Assuming the top end is a mirror of the bottom. It looks like Woods was right. With what? <laughs> it's the giant staff. Oh, okay. I'm like, wait, where? Oh, the drawing board. We're on the other side now, next to the thing. Don't know what everyone's talking about. <laughs> Holy crap, I was right ish. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now how the fuck do we make this thing smaller? Quickly, someone tried to hug it and it tuned to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my only guess. Uh, you feel a slight tremor as if as you're uh, complaining, as if the ground all around you was shaking just the slightest bit. Oh, it's gonna be like that scene in Aladdin where they gotta escape the cave of wonders. I'm thinking. <laughs> See, I wasn't thinking that, but now I'm thinking that. Oh, shucks, I gave the DM ideas. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do, do I... The, 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 can I... See if it's like... Uh, is something to do with the... The earth itself or... Something to do with Spoon just... Doing that. Boone stopped hitting the pillar a while ago. Okay, uh, do I notice any change changes in the pillar? Uh, getting right up close to it? Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Let's get close. Alright. Well, yeah, getting right up on the pillar and examining it closely, you see that there is now a uh, about a half inch gap between the pillar and the ground around the entire circumference. Can I look uh, underneath the gap? Uh, it's not it's not sitting above the ground, it's around the edges of the pillar. Oh, okay, so it, uh, it got thinner. Uh, what's whatever you did before it worked? Part, I just saw an ape, like, beat the crap out of it, and I just hugged it a few times. Uh, I'm going to try Wood's idea and try to hug the pillar. Alright, you hug the pillar, looking like an absolute fool, and nothing really happens. The gentle hum is still there, though. I'm going to concentrate on the hum, on the hum, and try to do the same with the mouth. You know, like mm. <laughs> trying to resonate with it. Uh, it's definitely a clever idea, but it doesn't really do anything besides make you look foolish. <laughs> <laughs> like, if cell phones existed, this would be on TikTok in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Woods, how many magic items uh, do you have? Uh, let's check. I have about four. 
uh, that you are tuned to? Oh, that I'm attuned to? Um, three, but I can unattune to one of them. I think every single one of those has three attuned items, right? Yep. Well, I think we should follow your idea and try. Uh, someone here tries to attune to the pillar, just don't know who. I can give it a shot. I just wear the cloak protection because I was afraid of saving pillars. Thanks, the best. You are a monk after all. Okay, um, I'm gonna unattune to my cloak of protection. I don't know how that works, but I'm just gonna take it off and fold it nicely and then put it in my bag. I think it actually and... takes time to unattune to an item, though. Oh. Well, we got time to kill. <laughs> I had to guess, I'd say it's like an hour. Oh. <laughs> Are we going to spend an hour having a picnic here while Woods just hugs the pillar? <laughs> well, it takes a full rest. It takes a full rest to attune to an item. I'd say it takes about an hour to unattune. So, unless you want to save for nine hours while Woods hugs a pillar, just to see if that works. <laughs> I don't think you need to hug a pillar, you could just rest against it. Maybe you could take the skeleton's place on the throne. Royalty. I don't think wasting a bunch of time is going to make this thing smaller. And uh, Wutsu yeah. is now right up against the pillar. Kind of shifts forward a little bit. And uh, Paige notices that the uh, gap between the floor and the pillar has grown larger. Okay. Woods looks like the, the, the pillar, uh, it's probably the staff, but just giant is liking you for some reason. <laughs> I think I have that much of a standing personality, but that's appreciated. Wait, uh, l let's try the, this thing. Come, come here. I'm going to take the uh, spoon ape, put the 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 throne back in place, please. He just puts one hand down and just slaps it. <laughs> okay, I take the skeleton and put it on the ground. Okay, we'll sit here. I don't want to run. Ugh. I'm going to reluctantly sit there. They clean it before she sits. Uh. Okay. I don't know where you're going with this, but okay. I don't know either. I think even Woods doesn't even know either. So, like, you know, instead of like a sitting down like a normal person, they're like kind of like ready to jump out of the chair any second now, so, like, really on edge, because I don't want... No, that's just a chair. This is stupid. <laughs> too connected to the pillar. <laughs> yes, this is stupid, but the rocks thing earlier. <laughs> See, that makes sense. This? No. <laughs> it obviously makes sense. Since the owner of the pillar sat here, now you are the new one. <laughs> That does follow a train of thought. Whether or not that train derails is a whole other story. I, I thought of the, the Seat of Darkness from Don't Starve. <laughs> okay, quite clearly it's not that, but the pillar is getting smaller. Okay. Maybe we should just wait? Feel uh, that small quake in the ground again. It seems as though the 
pillar has shrunk in size once more. Okay, I think we should just wait. I'm getting out of the chair, I don't like it. Well, the funny thing is, you're figuring it out and you haven't realized that you're figuring it out. What, every time we touch it or slap it? Uh, Alright, you'll realize eventually. Uh, okay, it's getting thinner, but it's not getting smaller, right? Uh, yeah, it's continuously getting thinner at the moment. And it seems to be extending the whole way up as there's a similar ridge along the top. Okay, let's reflect what we've been doing for the past hour not time we've been here dealing with the thing. Maybe something we been... say? Like maybe every time we say pillar or something it gets smaller. You feel the ground quake as it suddenly shrinks again. Oh, would you look at that? Is it pillar or smaller? It happens again. Pillar. <laughs> Nothing. Smaller? <laughs> it continues to shrink in size. It's now approximately half the size it was when we entered this area. It's getting thinner now, but how do we make it shorter? <laughs> smaller enough for a halfling. In the blink of an eye, the pillar is gone. Oh, why? And a small red and gold rod falls straight onto Paige's head. Well, would you look at that? Yes, I have to roll damage. <laughs> damage? Uh, two points of bludgeoning damage. It just fell like 50 feet. <laughs> Be happy it was just a D10. Uh, well. It's no bigger than a simple cudgel to you. Uh, uh, I'm going to, I don't know, point it to the air. Uh, grow to 10 feet. As you hold the staff in your hands and command it. It does, in fact, grow to exactly 10 feet long. Hey, it works! Oh my god, I can't control it! <laughs> Congratulations, you've just gotten your hands on the staff. Specifically, the Rui Jingu Bang. Uh, bless you. <laughs> oh, we're Chinese. Staff, once used by the Great Sage a long time ago, is certain greatly, and only those acknowledged by it can even hold it in their hand, lest they be crushed by its immeasurable weight. The long staff holds great powers, and its magical abilities, along with its sheer weight, make it deadly against even the strongest of foes you may encounter. It is a quarter staff requiring attunement, and has several divine properties. Uh, here, Woods, I think it would be better for you. Are you sure you seem to have a lot of command over it already? That's impressive. I mean, do you ever see me getting close to close with an enemy? Well, well you literally no. did just extend it to be 10 feet long. You wouldn't have to get that close. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a moment, can I achieve ridiculous stuff? Like, can I hit the enemy here? <laughs> uh, well, I did add it to your magic items list under God Tools, so you can actually see its full abilities once you've attuned to it. But, uh, if you wasted enough time doing that, yes, you could reach an opponent at literally any distance. You know what? I think I'll keep it. 
waste the first 10 turns of combat, extending it by 10 feet each turn, eventually slap someone 100 feet away with it. Exactly. Well, I guess you're going to be one of those individuals that will touch someone with a 10 foot, 10 foot pole. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Every one who gets close to the wizard gets bonked. <laughs> Uh, now, if you ever get returned to prison, you can sneak that in. <laughs> oh, how small can it go? Can it go to, like, the size of, like, a stack of quarters? Uh, it was famously hidden by Monkey inside of his ear. So. Oh. <laughs> How'd that work? I don't know, but okay. Oh, so uh, I can make it super small? Yep. Outside of combat, you could change its size at will, but in combat, it has a limit. I'm going to do similar to him, and I'm going to uh, put it... Uh, actually, I don't have it yet, so I for now I'm just going to put it in my pocket, but back in time I'm going to buy uh, something to put on my hair. <laughs> I forgot the name. A hairpin? A hairpin. Probably just use the staff as a hairpin. <laughs> yeah, let's use the staff as a hairpin. <laughs> there you go. Granted, you will have to attune to it, but... For now, it's fine. For now, you have just the most basic of its abilities. And as you celebrate finally conquering the... Not so, uh... Difficult as you thought riddle of the... Staff, that is where we shall end for today.